Guardians of the Galaxy is directed by James Gunn and it stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, Dave Bautista, and Lee Pace as the villain Ronan the Accuser. This movie came out in 2014 and I'm going to be talking spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet, go see it, come back, and because uh, I'm going to be talking about pretty much everything about this movie, uh, the good, the bad, you know. This movie starts really heavy on the emotional scale, much heavier than any other Marvel movie to date. And, you know, Peter Quill's mother is dying of some unknown disease. We assume cancer because she's, she has no hair. Um, and during that scene, the kid who plays young Peter Quill gives out this huge scream. And that scream just sends shivers down my spine every time. You know, it's, he's such a great little actor in that short amount of time that he's in it. He makes an impact and the audience is hooked right then and there. Within the first five minutes, they're telling a better story than most movies do throughout their entire runtime. And, uh, you know, basically the plot revolves around uh, later in life, Peter Quill finds what's called an orb and in inside it is an infinity stone. So, you know, he's trying to sell it to make some money. And Gamora, who is an adopted daughter of Thanos, loaned out to Ronan, the accuser. She is sent to go retrieve it, but she ends up betraying Ronan, trying to sell it to somebody else who is going to be able to pay more money, known as the Collector. But then Ronan wants this thing to give to Thanos, and Thanos kind of makes Ronan angry, so Ronan betrays him. Eventually, Ronan gets the Infinity Stone, and then he's like, I'm going to destroy a planet, and then I'm going to come and kill you, Thanos. And that's pretty much the plot. Um, you know, this, this movie really does a fantastic job of opening up the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, when we had movies like Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Hulk, uh, and then we got Thor. Thor was a big movie because it opened it up. I didn't like the Thor movies, but it still opened up the universe tremendously. It's like, there are other worlds that can be brought into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then they bring in Guardians of the Galaxy and it's like, there's a whole galaxy of different planets that we can bring into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they take such a big risk. You know, everything about this movie, almost everything, on paper should not work. You know, a talking raccoon, a talking tree that only says three words, that shouldn't work. But the way they do it, and the voices that they chose with Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel, my goodness, it just, it's just, it's perfect. When I saw the first like promotional images, I think it was like uh, concept art for Rocket Raccoon, all I see is a raccoon holding a gun. And I'm like, what is this movie? Why is this raccoon named Rocket? This, this looks so stupid. Marvel, what are you doing? And then you see the movie and you're like, Marvel, you're geniuses. <laughs> I mean, to pull something off like this, like this movie, just to make it so fun and just it works so well. And it was their biggest gamble, in my opinion, and it paid off the most. And Marvel, at this point, after this movie came out, basically everyone is thinking, you know, Marvel can't do anything wrong now. You know, they, they made a talking raccoon and a talking tree work really well. Like, everyone fell in love with those characters. And while everyone says that they stole the show, yes, they did. But the surprise for me was Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. I don't watch wrestling, but I know that Dave Bautista comes from wrestling. And in my opinion, wrestlers aren't always the best actors. Uh, I mean, The Rock is the exception to that, but Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, there's a few other guys that have tried and it hasn't really worked out for them. But, uh, you know, Dave Bautista really surprised me. Uh, in particular, that scene when they're breaking out of the prison. And he's, he's such a literal character. And they actually say that later on in the scene when uh, Peter Quill, Star-Lord, basically says it was a metaphor and then Rocket says, metaphors are going to go way over his head. And then Drax just comes in and says, nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. He says it much better than I did. But it's just, his line delivery of that is so great. It's such a stupid line, but it's also so brilliant. And that's what I love about this movie. Everything about it, 
you would think would be stupid, but it ends up being brilliant. And the, the casting was probably one of the best aspects of this movie. I mean, Chris Pratt, uh, if I seem to remember him losing, what was it, like 30 pounds? Just to play this role in like a few months. I mean, he went all out for this role. And it shows he clearly is like in love with this role. Uh, he's kind of like a Han Solo type of character with a little more sass. Uh, Gamora's just like an assassin. She's just cool. And Rocket, played by Bradley Cooper, just brilliant. I mean, his voice alone is just so entertaining to listen to. And he's always just like angry or sarcastic or something. You know, he's just and then and then Groot. Vin Diesel playing Groot, just saying, I am Groot all the time. It just, it works, you know, because that's, from what I know, uh, that's where Vin Diesel got his start doing voiceover work on the Iron Giant. And for him to go back to his roots, pun intended, uh, to play Groot, it just works. It works really well. And I already talked about Dave Bautista. He was great. Um, the only negative, but still yet a positive for this movie, is the villain, Ronan the Accuser. Uh, he's a one-off villain. The Marvel still struggles kind of this, to this day to give us a good villain outside of Loki. Personally, I really liked Ultron, but obviously he only lasted for one movie. I mean, that's a character they couldn't really keep going. Uh, the Red Skull they got rid of, he was an okay villain. But uh, Loki's really the only one that, that the audiences really care about. I think what works best in this movie is the comedy. Uh, they put a lot of comedy in it, and there's still a lot of action in it. Uh, but the comedy is so well placed. And it's all over the place. But it's so well placed and well done, well acted. Everything about it is just almost flawless. I mean, the stakes in this movie are so high. I mean, we have an Infinity Stone. I, I believe it's the Power Infinity Stone or something. Where if you, ha if Ronan has it, because he has it at the end of the movie, or near the end of the movie, if he touches a planet, it's going to destroy the planet and everyone on it. Yet they can still make this a fun, comedic movie. And the stakes are extremely high. And Thanos, like they call him the Mad Titan Thanos, who we all know is going to be the big villain in Avengers Infinity War. Um, he's after all these Infinity Stones. And that for them to still keep going with the comedy with all that in the backdrop is just incredible. And it works so well. The soundtrack for this movie is yet another positive on this movie's record. Uh, just every song works so well. And uh, Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Swede, that was like their main marketing song. And I didn't know when they were going to put it in the movie. And I liked where they put it because uh, Peter Quill, Star-Lord, actually talks about the song. Like, that song belongs to me. The last thing he was doing on Earth before his mother died was listening to his, his mixtapes. So something that I've noticed after watching it multiple times is in the background of when you see like the Nova Corps or uh, the people on Xandar with Glenn Close and John C. Riley's characters, um, in the background there's always this attractive woman taking notes on an iPad or something. It's always a different woman, I think. But uh, she's always in the background and she's like tapping on an iPad or something just Scribbling notes. Um, I, it's something that I noticed because I'm always looking around the frame like, why, why, are she, why is she there? I mean, there's a part where Glenn Close is saying, all right, pilots, lock up and form a blockade or whatever, and then this one girl's just, I don't get it. So guys, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies, and it adds to the fact that it's a space movie, and some of my favorite movies are space movies, you know, Interstellar, The Martian, Guardians of the Galaxy, some of the Star Wars movies. And uh, this movie just takes those concepts, like the space drama, into a new direction. And it also takes it, takes Marvel into a new direction and really just 
broadens the galaxy so they can pretty much do whatever they want now. And uh, guys, I'm so excited for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But uh, that comes out this weekend, and Karen and I are going to try our best to go see it. We have a pretty busy weekend this weekend, but, you know, we're going to do our best. But uh, for the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I definitely give it an A. Yes, there are a few things that they could have done better, but there's so few of them that they, that they missed. You know, uh, for the most part, this movie is just thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, I would watch this movie over and over again and probably not get bored. So guys, that's my review of Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Uh, the second one comes out this weekend, and Karen and I are going to try our best to go see it on Saturday. Uh, we have a really busy weekend ahead of us. Um, it's going to be hard for us to find any free time to go see a movie and then talk about it on camera. But uh, we're going to do our best, and uh, hopefully by Sunday, if not by Monday, we'll have that review up for you guys. And uh, if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can be notified when we upload new content. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.